a particle starts moving with a velocity of 6 meters per second and accelerates at 2 meters per second squared. Find the distance it covers in 3 seconds. So we can use the equations of straight line, equation of motion to calculate the distance the particle covers. So we use the Silvert equation S equal U T plus half A T squared. Because we know the initial velocity from the question to be 6 meters per second, then the acceleration to be 2 meters per second squared, and the time to be 3 seconds. So when we substitute into this formula, we get S to be equal to 6 times 3 plus half times 2 times 3 squared. And that will give you 18 plus 9, which is 27 centimeters. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Find the unit vector in the direction of the vector negative 8i plus 6j. A unit vector is given by the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. So a unit vector in the direction of negative 8i plus 6j is given by this negative 8i plus 6j over the magnitude of the same vector. So the magnitude of this vector is negative a squared plus 6 squared square root. And that will give us square root of 64 plus 36 which is the same as root of 100. We now simplify this to get negative 4 over 5i plus 3 over 5j. So the correct answer is option D. The table below shows the distribution of mangoes picked by some children. So we have number of mangoes picked 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Number of children. 1, 2, 5, 8, 9, 4, 1. Use it to answer questions 13 and 14. Question 13. Find correct to the nearest whole number. The mean number of mangoes picked. So the mean is given by summation fx over summation f so we can calculate that by multiplying this by this this by this up to the last one then dividing by the sum of the frequencies and that will give us something like this 0 plus 2 plus 10 plus 24 plus 36 plus 10 plus 6 all over 30 that simplifies to 3.27 to the nearest to the nearest whole number the answer is 3 if a child is selected at random what is the probability that he picked at least 4 mangoes so four mangoes, at least four mangoes means four or more. So four, five, and six mangoes. So probability of at least six mangoes will be the probability that he pick four or five or six. And that will be equal to nine over thirty plus four over thirty plus one over thirty which is the same as 14 over 30 or 0 
So the correct answer is C. If y is equal to x cubed plus 1 over x squared, find the y dx. So this is the given function. We can rewrite this to get it in the exponent form so that we don't use any lending formula. That is the quotient rule. We want to use the power rule. So we rewrite this as this. So this, this is negative 2. Now we differentiate to get the y the x equal 3x squared plus negative 2x exponent 3. x exponent negative 3. That means we use the exponent to multiply and subtract 1. So this will give you 3x squared minus 2 over x cubed. D will be the correct choice. If the standard deviation of the set of numbers 1, 3, 5, 7 is 2.27, Find a standard deviation of the set six, eight, one, six, eight, ten, two. Sorry, six, eight, ten, twelve. So we know that if you compare the two sets given to us. The first one is one three five seven. The second is six eight ten twelve. You can see that we just added a constant of five to each of the elements of the given set whose standard deviation is two point two four. Therefore, because we added a constant, the standard deviation will not change. The standard deviation is a measure of variation so there's nothing changing they all move the same step away or closer to the mean so there's no change over them hence the standard deviation will be the same as 2.24 therefore the correct answer is option a We want to evaluate this 1 minus root 3 over 1 plus root 3. So we need to rationalize. Multiply by the conjugate of 1 plus root 3, which is 1 minus root 3. We multiply both the numerator and the denominator to get this. Now we expand. Okay. If you expand the numerator, you get 1 minus 2 root 3 plus root 3 squared. Then if you expand the denominator using uh, using difference of 2 squares, you get 1 squared minus root 3 squared. So that will give you 1 minus 2 root 3 plus 3, all over 1 minus 3, which is the same as 4 minus 2 root 3, because 3 plus 1 is 4. Minus 2 root 3 all over 1 minus 3 which is negative 2 and that will give you negative 2 plus root 3 so that will be option B if alpha plus beta are the roots of the quadratic equation x squared plus bx minus x squared plus bx plus q is equal to 0 express 1 over alpha squared plus 1 over beta squared in terms of b and q so we know alpha 1 over alpha squared plus 1 over beta squared collect lcm to get alpha square beta squared and alpha square go here beta squared and beta square will go here alpha squared so that's that is what will give us this we need to get the uh, expression for alpha squared plus beta squared which is alpha plus beta all squared 
minus 2 alpha beta all over alpha beta squared so we know that alpha plus beta is the same as negative b over a and alpha beta is the same as c over a so we have our a to be 1 a is the coefficient of x squared 1 then b to be p then c to be q so we do our substitution to get this and when we simplify we obtain p squared minus 2q over q squared so that will be option c question 19 write down the 27th term of the sequence 1951 1954 1957, 1960. So the 27th term is the first term plus the 26th term. The 27th term is the first term plus 26 times the common difference. So that is an arithmetic sequence for you. You can see that the sequence is arithmetic because we are adding a constant of 3. So 51 plus 3 will give you 54 plus 3, 57 plus 3, 60. So that's why it's an arithmetic sequence. So the first term we know to be 1951, and the common difference is D. So the 27th term is 1951 plus 26 times 3. And that will give you 1951 plus 78 which is the same as 2029. Question 20. If log of 100 exponent x base 10 plus log of 1 over 10 exponent x plus 1 base 10 is equal to 0, then what is the value of x where x is greater than 0? So this is the equation given to us. We need to rewrite this to look like this using the law of exponent. So we rewrite this to come to the numerator and the exponent, which is negative one here, which is one here becomes negative, and it will multiply the the exponent which is already there. Now we use the product rule of the logarithm that uh, if the log I have this have the same base and they are adding we need to multiply and that will give us this we multiply the numbers so we multiply the numbers and give them the same base or give them one base so now we can take the anti logarithm of both sides we use the product rule of indices again to simplify this exponent okay so we, we simplify this exponent to get this so the 100 is same as 10 squared so the 2 multiplies the x to get 10 exponent 2x. So we can now write down the same base and add the exponent. So since the bases are now equal, we can equate the exponent. So 2x minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. And when we simplify this, 2x minus x is x. And the negative 1 comes here to become 1. The correct answer is option A. So we are solving some kind of questions so that will help you solve this year's mercy. So I'm going to upload a lot of them for you to be able to write your wasi and also pass very well on elective mathematics. So this is elective mathematics or additional mathematics paper one. We'll be solving a lot of questions. I'll be uploading them soon. So don't forget to share with your friends, comment, don't have if you don't understand something ask in the comments then don't forget to click the subscribe button so that if I upload a new video you'll be informed 
Thanks for watching and I wish you all the best in your exams. Now, if you can still see this red thing here, it means you have not yet subscribed. So you just have to click it so that the next upload, you see it is still red. You have to click it so that if I upload the next video, you'll be informed. Click the bell icon too, so that you get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.